thanks for stopping by our channel once again pressing that play button if you haven't done so already click the subscribe button below click the like button click the little bell icon for future content and today we're back again to uh, work on our little uh, batch make of our Loki bag and here's the first one sitting over here with the uh, base drying and um, we're gonna film this one a little differently with some stabilized cameras um, and we'll forego the the uh, point of view camera with a GoPro on my head and uh, see how that works. Honestly, that's the easier way for us to do these, but uh, we'll try to be accommodating. This leather we're using here is uh, a pebble doubling by Horween. It's in the three and a half to four ounce range with a kind of a medium to light temper. It's just for this application, it's just perfect temper in our opinion. Now, if you were to turn this bag 100%, meaning uh, you're gonna quote unquote birth the bag, this temper of leather is gonna be a challenge for sure. And you're gonna risk uh, the integrity of your seams if you would, you know, you were to turn a bag with this material, especially if you know, a, uh, a smaller piece like this one. If it was a little larger, it's doable, but still not easy. method on this design is such that we don't need to worry about um, risking the integrity of the seams or exposing thread or anything like that. Um, like I said, just because of the construction method. the standard bobbin winder because this this old girl's she's been through the the gamut so what i've done is i've taken uh, and we have another video on our channel i'll link it above um what we've done is taken an old bobbin winder apart and i have the shaft right here and um basically what i do is just hook this up to a drill motor this in the drill motor and then um, wind my bobbin with
after this, we'll go build. Some crossbody connectors. I think on the brown bed, this one, we will put uh, some black straps up the side, full connectors that attach to the base. And then the other two we'll just make with some standard inch, inch and a half connectors at the top. We'll go make the connectors. Here's the trick to this stuff. Um, don't drink the Kool-Aid that some of these makers are giving you with these crazy electric strap connectors or electric strap cutters. Um, unless you're working in a huge factory and you make a zillion straps, you don't need a strap cutter. As a matter of fact, it wastes a lot of material. This is the kind of stuff you need is a, a one inch ruler that you can buy from like Harbor Freight or McMaster Car or something like that. And the trick is, is to have another ruler or straight edge against that. Establish one straight line, slide your material against the stop. And then, um, Slide your other ruler against it, your other straight edge, whatever dimension you want, and then you can make another cut. And now you have a perfect one inch strap with basically zero waste. The other way to do it would be to lay your straight edge right on top of the material with excess on either side. And now you can also, I'm holding this in place. One inch strap. Don't use a strap cutter. All you need is a really sharp rotary cutter and some really good straight edges. We use all kinds of different ones. We use some flat bars that we buy. Um, this is a two inch ruler, which we use a lot. This came from Harbor Freight, I believe. Um, that's it. If you have trouble keeping them in place, another trick you can use is these woodworking tools. This is just a, like a quick clamp. And so you can clamp these in place on your table whatever the case may be, and now it's very stout. So we'll, we'll utilize that kind of third hand as well. I'm gonna take these over to the sky where sky is very thin, and then we'll continue on making these connectors.
of space in here, right up here for my hardware. And the hardware we're using for these has a screw, so it's basically like a standard D-ring, but the D-ring's removable with a screw, so it's threaded, it's got a little threaded post. I wanna keep this wide open. And my stabilizer and my little nylon in there, um, free and clear and nice and round. So that hardware is very easy to get in there. So I'm just going to kind of roughly stick these together. And then choose the nicest side a little later to stitch them on. I'll finish the edges on these and they'll be ready to go. This is just a little token all. You could slick this up with water too, works just fine. But I have this, so. Post bed and stitch those connectors on. So I'm gonna take my little square and scribe a stitch line on there. Just so it stays straight.
And I'm lifting up around the corners because this leather will mark real easy. There's nothing you can do about it, but we try to minimize the scratches from the machine as much as possible. Here, I'm going to pull that thread to the bottom. Hold them out of the way so they don't get caught up in the bobbin. And then we're just going to follow that little line. this without this machine or something similar you'd never sew that on like that. another use for this kind of equipment but trust me when I say this machine gets about less than five percent of the use you know per make but it's like anything you know You're not gonna cut wood with a flamethrower, right? So. There's no one machine that'll do every operation, obviously. That's why they make so many of them. Thank you. 